This episode is brought to you by Higginbotham, your single source for insurance, wealth management, and employee benefit needs. Glamour. Grit. Glamour. Grit. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Glamour and Grit episode. The musical. <laughs> Cinco. <laughs> episode five. I feel like those kindergartners that I actually do. The, like, do you do this with A, B, C, D, E, F, G? Like, oh. I can't. If you say, like, F, I have to go A, B, C, D, E, F, G. In no like, possible way would I be able to guess a letter the in the letter. middle of the alphabet without having to go from A to Z. The vi- and I, I thought I was the only person that did that, actually. No, no, no. That is actually, it's so weird. Me and my brother, Jake, from that we do our Better Call Jake, um, we were doing the kids. We were trying to be like, A, what does A start with? Ah, ah. And they were like, Apple. We're like, B. And then Jake and I both got to F and we were like, A, C, D, E, F, G. G. Yep. G, yep. G, I am the exact G. same way. And I am so bad about um, addition that I still use my fingers to do quick math. Oh, aren't we? Oh, aren't it's pretty we bad. so smart? But. But when we went around the world in school back in the day, yeah. you know, you'd do like around the world and you'd do the multiplication tables mm-hmm. and whoever did faster just kept on going. I would typically win because I could rapid fire my finger so fast. But yet it's the wrong technique and kind of embarrassing if you do it in public. No, but I think it, it is baffling to me how much of an idiot I actually am. Don't because say that. I, no, but I'm dead serious. I'm insanely street smart. But when it comes to like actual things. I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. Well, welcome back to the Glamour and Grit. We're so happy you're here. Uh, it's been a good week. It's been a good week. Oh I... my gosh, y'all! I literally had to get a a a a how to get an IV because I am just a what pooped. an I an IV an IV. Okay. I had to get an IV. It is so weird to me that most of the people are just listening and not watching us. Because I feel like we're actors. So, so much of our stuff is like movement and we're talking and we're I feel well, like we're so entertaining on YouTube. I just, yeah, I just realized the Spotify, uh, you can watch and listen, which is kind of cool. Plays the video while you Can well, I tell you a secret? What? I don't use Spotify. What do you use? Apple Podcasts. Oh, can I not speak? <laughs> you gotta cut out the uh, Apple Podcasts. The accents. And, um, and Pandora. For podcasts? No, but for life. Like, I listen to music. People listen to their music on Spotify. I listen on Pandora. <laughs> I know. Well, so you're not, you. You're not supposed to admit that because it's very strange. Um, anyway, <clears throat> it's kind of a whirlwind because literally just got in from Mexico where I have to go back to uh, to finish up the show, but just here for a few days. Well, actually, I'm just waiting to find out when I'm supposed to go back. Um, and you just explain the amount of money that you just raised for an incredible organization and you were the chair of, and there was 1500 people that came at Dickie's arena here in Fort Worth. Just talk a little bit about what just went down in the world of charity, um, through your lens. It is extremely, extremely, this is like so cornball, but I, I think I've talked about this on the show. When Mick got sick, I realized how important it was to give back and, especially for people that don't have the access and care that we are given. And so I, one of our sponsors, Texas Health, who I worship them, have these things called mobile units and they go to underserved areas and they give women mammograms and men prostate exams and colon exams and able to give care to the people that don't have access to -to day-to-day care. Um, And I was the chair of this event called Putting on the Pink. It, if you can tell, it was kind of more breast cancer back in the day, but now it is like crazy. Um, all all the different cancers, and we raised an insane amount of money. Give so, us a number. I don't have the official number yet. Are we I, talking a thousand dollars? Or are no, we no, talking? no, no. I, I would think like half a million. Nice, probably. It, which is crazy because they do raffle tickets and not auction like packages. So people are most of the time giving five dollars to twenty five dollars. So to raise. That extreme amount of money is so cool. And this half a million dollars goes towards cancer research and... and the mobile units. Oh, the mobile units. So they, okay. To go to underserved areas, which is so amazing. And so they have a survivor's 
modeling walk. So we have real models from Neiman Marcus and then survivor models. And I was backstage most of the show and I kind of snuck around to watch the survivor models. They open it up with a nine-year-old oh. that had, had stage five cancer. Oh. And I just lost my mind. I just could not stop bawling because I'm like, at the end of the day, this is the most important thing in the world. And if you can just take the time to give back, even if you don't have the financial means to give back. My best friend, Shelby, started volunteering at a community center. Shelby goes there four times a week now. And just to be able, you can't complain about our world unless you're on the ground actually doing something. So go I mean, do something. Yeah, you can complain all you want, but what is that going to do? <laughs> exactly. It's it, And it, I feel like sometimes it's just a self-serving thing if you're complaining. It just like feeds your own ego. Yeah. But if you are, it, it was so, we, I, this, I'm going to actually take my earrings off because I feel like I hear them in the microphone. Um, but we went to this place called Joe T's after to celebrate because my, one of our best friends in the entire, entire world, Landon Beard, came, um, who may or may not be on the show in the future with his wife, Vanessa Ray, him and your brother, Matt Gumley, sang, and they are the two of the most talented singers in the world. And so last night we partied it up at G.O.T. Garcia's, and I had a little too many margaritas, which I'm not a drinker, so, you know, when it hits, and usually I'm an emotional drinker, but we went around the table. I love this game, to go around the table and ask a question, and everybody asked, like, where we saw ourselves in one year. Like, what would they want from themselves? And for the first time, I think, in my my whole life, I am so content. I am so happy. Like, I truly am done. Like, I don't need anything more. Okay. Or would want anything more. <clears throat> That's, that. I mean, what an amazing place to feel that but way. So I started bawling. Mentally, I was like, spiritually, it, emotionally, everything, just right on point. Really right, like truly. So what I, did you, can you, can you share? What did you, what did you say? That's what I said. That I. Nothing? No, that, that I am so content. Like, to be oh, honest. So your, your thing in a year is, I want to feel the way I feel right now in one year. Yes. And I saw like, I would love, it was more about everybody around the table and all of my best friends are happy. Your siblings are happy. Just that feeling of like looking around at my life and my, my best friends, everybody, they, as a parent, you always say you're only as happy as your saddest child. Mm -hmm. I'm only as happy as my saddest child and everybody around me. I'm definitely an empath. And I looked around last night and I was just so content and happy. Was it the tequila or was was this? Uh, no, like... I don't know. It, I think yesterday watching that little girl, it was just another reminder of just to take a breath. Because when we did that fancy lady cowgirl, we had to write a note to our younger self. And I wrote, I put this on my Instagram stories that I wish I would have looked around. I just said, stop looking ahead. I, all I wanted to be was a Broadway star. All I wanted to be was in New York. I never lived in the moment. So Shelby and Natalie, my two best friends, and Keely, they can recite my whole life to me. And it's sad for me sometimes I don't remember those moments because I always was wanting this goal. And I think, I'm going to cry, but like I looked around and I was just like, I'm okay. Like, I'm so happy. Like, I did it. Like, for once in my life, I just felt so content. And I didn't know for myself if I could ever feel content. Because I think as actors, we're actors for a reason. We're always pushing. We're always wanting something more. My kids are healthy and happy. My husband was doing at his, like, dream job. Like, you love to work. It doesn't matter how big the set, how big or small you are at work. My family's happy. My grandparents are happy. My brother and sister-in-laws are happy. I just think, you know, my sister-in-law opened that amazing business. Our Kiki, your sister. I, it just was so special. So I hope everybody has that moment. It was so weird. 
Oh, oh my gosh. Man. Happy Friday, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> it must have been the eclipse. The eclipse is just making everybody emotional. But no, I honestly like so wild. as as a spouse, as a husband, as a best friend, as a partner, as of seeing you through ups, seeing you through downs, to hear you say these words and to actually know that you're feeling this way and not just saying you're feeling this way makes everyone around you better and happier. And you know what I mean? Like totally. Because it's like I feed off of everything you do. You feed off of everything I do. And just it's it's a game changer when you're in that kind of headspace. And and it's, I'm just, it sounds so like hoity toity right now because I am so happy right now. But from somebody that has been in severe depression or severe anxiety. And the thing is with you, with Sainty, as most of you know who know her, if, if you don't, you're listening to this, you already know she is such a personality. She's such an open book in public and she's just the life of the party, the life of the room. She's got this energy that just is infectious. So even if you were, nobody would have ever really known because you're ever. so good at masking mm -hmm. in the moment. Whereas a lot of people like myself, for instance, like I kind of wear my emotions. I get quiet. Like I'm not I just, it's hard for me to get out of that headspace. Whereas you could have probably, and you were for, you know, the first probably year of mixed life. 100%. Was, we're in a really, really, really. Sad space. Dark, you know, just not yourself. But nobody really knew except. You know, you, your mom. my mom. Yeah. I think are the, were the only two people that because knew. Because you, you wear the rose-colored glass. Like, you, you pretend, and, like, no one would ever know that because it's just Sany and she's just bubbly personality. But, um, so it's nice because everyone <laughs> thinks it's just the same Sany all this time, but really underneath right now is something so much different than what, you know. And I just didn't <clears throat> think contentment existed, to be honest. And that's going to be so crazy for so many people to hear that because of just what your personality shows all the time. Totally. It, it will, and I think it is important. I still remember the one fight me and my brother ever got into, me and Jake, and ever, never fought. I was 16. He was, oh my gosh, 12. And I made him, I dropped him off on the street corner of our street. Like, it's a, this is back in the day. And he had to walk four houses to our house. And I came home and started sobbing that I would ever do that. So I think most people realize with me, if I ever had hurt somebody or ever, it like destroys me. I think about it every day. I like, I would never want to hurt somebody. So I, I don't know. I just wanted to, this is a very deep talking. I, this is the deep, the, the grit of the glamour and grit. But I just wanted to remind people that are out there that are in the dark and in the grit right now that it can't happen. Like sunshine oh, it, can happen. And it will. It's just, it's, it's a matter of. Just time. Sometimes it really is time and work and space and you're changing your surroundings. And I don't know. It's just so interesting. I'd never, I truly have never felt content before. I was always looking ahead or always like wanting this or be like it's goals everybody wants goals now was that something that was kind of bred into you you know to to to, to were, were you taught from a young age like you've got to go forward you've got to think about goals you've got to da, da, da. or was this something that you developed in high school or college or just kind of became you know forward thinking mentality or from as early as an age as you can remember four that, when i decided that casa had hired me to be in the Christmas show and they hadn't, I just saw a flyer and told my mom they want me at the Casa Christmas show. And my parents always just waited for me to like not fall in love with it anymore. And it never did. I just was always like, I want more. I got, it was like theater and the arts were like such a drug to me. Could you imagine our daughter right now saying or feeling that way about anything no it is so bizarre even to me. about what she wants to eat she like even about it she's not even the type frozen like she likes frozen but she's not like obsessed she really I thought get... she loved little mermaid and then you're telling me oh now oh my gosh her and landon <laughs> you're telling me Molly now she Morgan doesn't and are playing on the piano and landon has one of the best voices in the entire world and he's singing the little mermaid i'm like you're being what is it called like you know, sung The Little Mermaid by such an amazing singer who's playing. And she goes, I don't really like The Little Mermaid. You and my dad like that movie, but not me. And I was like, 
oh my gosh, we have fed you like the little mermaid for all year of just like Momo mermaids. You love mermaids and she doesn't even like it. I mean, that's so shocking because I literally, I, it's, it is my favorite Disney princess movie, but I truly thought it was hers too. And she was just appeasing me and I thought I was appeasing her. So, so sorry, Momo. Go figure. But I really can't imagine her at this age, at four years old, like you were, and my brother Matt was the same way. He was mm-hmm. at two years old, knew what he wanted to do, and was wanting to pursue singing and performing and just like lived for it. Like we could truly see that that made him happier than anything, and that's all he wanted to do. That was you at four. That is so mind blowing for me now having a four year old thinking about her being that way with anything. Well, and I just feel like four year olds are not that deep, they're no. deep. But they really are black and white and simple and kind. And somebody said to me, all they want is to have fun. And if you think about that, when they're being restless at the table, really all they want is to have fun. A four-year-old's goal is to have fun. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Just have fun. And it's the worst when you know you're just not cutting it for them at the moment. Because she's just like. My every day of my life. (laughs) I just like I'm not cutting it. It's just not cutting it. Like, why aren't you being more fun right now, Dad? Please be fun. Like, ah. We've been playing and all this stuff. I just need to get like 15 minutes of work done. It's like not okay. And especially if you work from home, you really understand this because they don't, the work never stops. Yeah. At least at the office, a lot of the time you can leave it at the office. You work from home, it's all day. So they see you and they're like, you're there, but you know, you're not there. Yeah. No, it's crazy. Which is so wild. How is Mexico? Uh, Mexico was good. Mexico was great. Um, you know, they told me, they warned me. They were like, don't eat the street food. Don't drink the water unless it's in a bottle. I followed all the guidelines, but no one told me not to brush your teeth with the sink water. Duh. So I did. And I got like, I don't even, what did they call it? I can't the- even tell you how <laughs> sick I was shaking, sweating in Mexico. The like, runs. Oh, both the, ends. Eh, it was just, it was a mess. And then the doctor came to my room and he didn't speak a lick of English and I don't really speak Spanish. So this is just like a disaster. Like it, it was just Mexico City's amazing and the work has been great and the people are beyond nice. But do not brush your teeth. Don't use the sink <laughs> water, folks. Even if you're spitting it out, I guess the particles are still in there and that's what happened to me. And I learned the hard way. Um, and I was expecting more people to speak English there. I don't know why. I just, I had been to Cabo and Playa del Carmen. And, you know, I feel like those are touristy places. And Definitely. a lot of sp- people spoke English. But in Mexico City, there's almost, there's 25 to 30 million people in the city, by the way. Mm-hmm. The most populated city in the entire world, uh, if not the first, the second, for sure. And I didn't run across a, a lot that spoke good English. I think it's because it's not your. It wasn't European settled. Every other place is European settled, so most of the time, English. Oh, it's is amazing. Secondary, so it is so cool that it really is its own. And they, we like, love Mexico City. We love Iceland. There's such a diverse group of Mexicans there, like because yeah. because you know they have had a lot of um, back in the day, um, you know. African settlers came to Mexico, and yeah, there's just so many different places, and so. Y- a lot of Mexicans look so different. Like, there's blonde, blue eyed, dark hair. Like, it's so, it was really a hodgepodge. You mean people look different? But in Mexico City, like, I just, <laughs> I don't know. It just, it, it was so cool. Like, it's just such a diverse group of Mexicans in Mexico City that I, it just, it was amazing to me. It was really Aww, cool. I felt I like I was, that. you know, back in New York. There was just so much diversity, but yet still the same. Um, but I will say it's funny because having never worked on a Mexican set or, um, in a country that didn't speak English, it's like they're spitting out directions and like, all right, you know, in the States, it's like, all right, we're rolling. Da, 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 da. Okay, guys, on this next shot, make sure you run over there, but don't forget to pick up the gun because he's going to be coming at you. But this time, let's start from standing on that mark. And they do it all in Spanish. And then he says, go. Acción. <laughs> and I'm like, what the, what, is, what am I supposed to do? What's my, and so I, I would just do what I did last time. I was like, cut, 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 cut. And so then they send the AD over. Oh, he's like, oh, 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 sorry. What he said was, <laughs> and like the one guy on set that's like translating everything. Yeah. Half the time isn't, isn't there to tell you because things are moving so quickly. Oh my gosh. That makes me cry. And so laugh yeah, no, I definitely got it wrong a number so, of AK, times. We need to be sponsored by what are those books that teach you Spanish? 
Hooked on phonics for Spanish, please. We need please. hooked on phonics. Uh, Spanish Fonds for dummies, for sure. We need it. We are so American. But it was really oh entertaining. And if you're not already nervous enough, like when you first get to a new set, not like nervous, but like the adrenaline's running, you're excited, you just want things to go well, you're trying to figure out the vibe because they've already done two episodes. I was coming in on episode three. And then you add like the language barrier on top of it and they're giving out notes and things are moving quick and there's like you're five. Like, I'm really blowing this. There's three or four cameras running around and... I was like, God, and I don't want to stop, you know, and be like, hey, what did you just say? Because I don't know. Um, so I kind of roll with it. Like, and uh, it's not always going according to plan, but, you know, I think it's expected. It's just, it's funny. It's been like a, a weird getting used to process. Well, speaking of your show is about crime. Did yeah. you uh, see OJ died? OJ died yesterday. Um, uh, you know what? He went to the grave with it. Yep. He and went he, to the grave with it. Do you think he it. went up or down? He went so far down, it's <laughs> not even a question. But the fact he went to the grave with it is mind-blowing to me. He's had cancer. He's been It's prostate cancer. He's been struggling with it. I think it was like two months. Wasn't it quick from when they found out? Well, the crazy part is that is such a curable cancer. If found early, that is like today, easy. Are you sure it's prostate? 100%. 100% sure. I didn't know what prostate is. Colon the one? Which is the one that's really, really bad for men? Both of them are so avoidable. First of all, you get your colon exams, you get your, your prostate exam, your colonoscopies. You do that as a man, you're good. They catch it. You're going to get it treated. It's a very treatable cancer. But it took this man out. Took this man out 76 years old. Hi, OJ. Yep. It's and, been fun. You know, it's been fun since 1995 was the trial began for the whole case of him killing his wife, Nicole, and her best friend, Rob. And the start of the Kardashians. And the I start mean, of the Kardashians. that truly the start of the Kardashians. Uh, not Rob, Ron Goldman. Um, that is so weird to me. When people are like, oh, they're, they're famous for being nothing. I was like, their dad was famous way before they were famous. They were already in a famous family. I just like that's when you don't know the history of the Kardashians. Yeah. And I mean, a lot of people, which is weird because he's, you know, he's ahead of our generation. But to so many people, he was like the Tom, the Michael Jordan, like of our, of their generation. Oh, he was yes. the sports icon. And they were like such a celebrity couple. No, I'm talking about OJ. I know. I'm talking oh, yeah, about yeah, him yeah, and yeah, Nicole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just, it's mind blowing to me. I mean, this Heisman winner, like, you know. Top of the line, number one running back. Like, everybody loved him. And then this all went down, and somehow he got out of it. He did get charged for some random, like, uh, he did go well, to jail. because he ran away probably from the cops. No, 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 no. He didn't get charged at all for the murder case. It was, like, later down the line he got in trouble for stealing something or something. He spent, oh, like, six yes, years yes, in yes, jail yes. Um, for something completely unrelated to killing anybody, which he should have been charged for. But I just can't believe— I can't believe he left this earth. Do you think there's maybe a note or something? And took it to his grave. I pray something surfaces. Or maybe a book, if he left a book. and If he's he vlogged, like, share. <gasps> and just we get this like oh. amazing video footage of his truth. It's like Biden is speaking to the people and they're like breaking news. And then it's just OJ's face and he speaks, like speaking to the world. That would be the greatest. He's like, guys, I did it. I it mean, was me. Somebody, J.J. Abrams, somebody will make a movie of that. But That TV series was so freaking good. Oh, my God. I, I mean, never really loved... I loved David Cuba. Schwimmer on, um, on Friends. I wasn't a huge, huge Friends. I never watched it. I know, contrary no, to yeah, public me too. opinion... It wasn't like, I was a Will and Grace girly. So Will and Grace was my creme de la creme. See, I can't watch. I don't watch comedies. It's. It, I sound like you a. You really don't watch anything. I unless... sound like a weirdo. But I. I like comedy movies. Okay. Like you. Like I. I used to love them a lot more than I do. The new ones aren't really as great. But gave me like any Happy Madison production of like our childhood or Zoolander even was one of my tops. But like today's comedies aren't hitting it for me. The TV comedy is definitely not. When you throw a laugh track on something for me, I'm out. You're done. I am done. I can't buy it. I feel like it. a laugh track makes me giggle even harder. I know. <laughs> and that's, that is, everybody will say that. I think I'm so weird for the way I think, but I, <sighs> comedy television shows don't do it for me. You're just not funny. Give me killing and dark and intense all day long. You really don't like shows either. The only um, way you'll watch a series is if your cousin Michael calls you and he's like, there's this new series. Only way. And I would have <laughs> told you about the series a hundred times. You could care less. Michael calls and is like, that's true. A series. 
then you'll binge it in like two days. That's true. That's true. That's true. But if I were to choose, I you know, give me like a four or five episode docu series on something. Oh, so good. I something agree. Something intense. <gasps> we haven't watched the new episode of Quiet on Set. No, we haven't. Between Quiet on Set and Seriously, I think I've gotten all of my friends converted. Natalie called me and she goes, Sainty, seriously, I can't. And I was like, oh my God, what? She was like, I literally will go tinkle for walking to the bathroom and walking, tinkling, walking back. I'll just have to listen to like as much as the episode as I can. Oh my God, I love it. It is that addicting. I gotta listen. I gotta listen. Oh, 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 we gotta talk about this for a second. We gotta. Megalopolis. Megalopolis? Am I saying that right? Hold on, let me check my Megalopolis. notes. Megalopolis. 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 <laughs> Mega, Megalopolis. Megalopolis is a movie coming out, eventually, written and directed by Francis Ford Coppola. Uh-huh. Do you know who that is? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yes. Francis Ford Coppola, for those of you who don't know, wrote and directed The Godfather. And is that his wine, too? The Coppola He's got wine? Coppola wine, mm-hmm. which Great is wine. amazing. The Coppola cab is truly, for a oh. $20 co- cab, Magnificent. make it a Coppola cab. <laughs> However, this man, who hasn't done a movie since 2011, has done everything. I mean, uh-huh. Godfather set, put him on the map. He did Godfather 2. He did Apocalypse Now. He's been, he wrote Megalopolis Mm -hmm. 40 years ago. Okay, but what's it about? And has been, nobody knows. (laughs) (laughs) It's been 40 years and nobody has a damn clue what this man is trying to do. um, But he did it. And it's coming out? It's coming out 120 million. No studios would fund this thing. So he took $120 million of his own money and financed every penny of this film himself. He sold off shares of his wine company to make this happen. It better be monumental, this movie. You know what he did that for before? Apocalypse Now. Mm. And that and Godfather are on the Almanac, Almanac, Almanac for arguably the best films ever. Do you think it's about social media? Something with that? What does that mean? Like megabytes? No, I, it's a Metropolis movie. So it's it, they've 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 like given like a generic plot of like you know Metropolis, New York City. But I'll tell you this: uh-huh. every celebrity under the sun, from Gwyneth Paltrow to you name it, has been attached to this movie at one point because this has been forty years in the making. He ended up. People dropped out. People went on and moved on with their lives. You know, things happened. Well, Francis Ford Coppola did not move on with his life. And he's been at this thing and has finally just did it with Adam Driver, Shia LaBeouf. <gasps> Is this the one with Shia LaBeouf and drag? Dustin Hoffman, Aubrey Plaza. Uh, I mean, you name it. And you're right. Shia LaBeouf <gasps> is in full woman. He's a woman in this movie. Please, every. I'm nails, heels, I know, the I, hair. People hate on Shia LaBeouf. I, I love me Shia too. LaBeouf. I'm just fascinated by him. I that think he's man. gotta be on the spectrum. There's something off with him. And I think that's what makes him so brilliant and so weird. And when he does the, I do think he has mental. He does. He's got his issues. He has his quirks. But and he's, he's worked so through them. He's so fascinating to me. He's so fascinating. And he makes the, oh, he's such a good actor. <gasps> he is such a good oh. actor. What is that? Um, Matthew uh, McConaughey. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, uh, from uh, Wolf of Wall Street. Yes, he did. He that was his warm up technique before he got into scenes. He would do this uh, uh, just to uh, kind of clear uh, his mind, clear his body, uh, get his uh, get him in the uh, moment. And he was doing that. And Leo was like, "What the? What are you doing?" He's like, yeah, "This is my thing. It gets me in the zone." He's like, "If you don't do that in this movie, you're really gonna mess things up." So Leo asked Martin Scorsese. And Martin Scorsese was like, "Sure." So he threw that into the movie. And that's just Let's his go. personal warm-up that he did in life that ended up in the movie. But anyway, Megalopolis. Cannot wait. <laughs> well, speaking of Megalopolis, Meg Gan Markle has two new shows coming out on Netflix. Because what? the world just can't wait to hear from Megan again. So she has Megan, a new show. Megan, what are you doing, girl? A lifestyle show. And I think it's about gardening and cooking. Boring. So boring. I'm out. And then a show about polo players. I thought you would love that. I'm about in. the polo championship. I'm in. I don't think she's going to be in it, but I think they're following 
the polo championship. This is brilliant. Nobody knows about polo. I know. And it's such an incredibly interesting, wild, very, very small group of people are in this sport. That's so cool. And one of our future guests talk, she worked years with Meghan Markle. I don't want to say what she thought about her because I want you guys to listen to the episode. But wow. it is very fascinating. I'm I'm looking forward to it, but not looking forward yeah, to it. Yeah, the gardening show, eh, but the polo show, that's really, really cool. And that's a very select group of individuals in this world that are extremely wealthy. So... Do you think it's very select, though? People won't watch it? because No, we love that. Oh, my God. Shows about, like, gypsies went off like a hit. Like Actually, you're you so know, right. Show me a group of people that nobody knows much about. Gypsies that's huge. Are- so fascinating to me. And there's so much that goes on behind polo because the owners are wealthy, but mm-hmm. everyone who plays, everyone who's behind the scenes are generally not. They're working well, for very, very every little sports money. In history. No, because the athletes in every other sport are wealthy. We just talked about Caitlin. What's her last name? Caitlin Clark. Okay, but they're still making women's basketball, still yeah. making $250,000. Those are the top players, but they're still making. See, that's not. But they're still making good money. I had I'm a talking about. husband played. Minor league baseball. Yeah. And they could barely get by. And that's professional athletes. Speaking of sports, um, did you see, you of all people, Mm -hmm. did you see the South Carolina Gamecocks women's head coach who went undefeated this season in the NCAA championship? Did you see any of her outfits? I miss the Cox. The Cox went all the way. (laughs) They didn't lose a damn game. They got in there. They they muffed things up and they got out with a undefeated straight undefeated record. But the coach, the head coach, her name, I have to give her credit, Dawn Staley. I love the name. Every day, every game had a new Louis head to toe iconic. Fantastic, iconic outfit on. Sweatsuits or like sweatsuits <gasps> or like the the pullover, you know, Ugh. the big Mercas or like or like the fancies, or I mean, the purses and the Louis. That, there is nothing better. There's nothing more bougie than Louis. Chanel is like, I am a rich white woman. Louis is like, I am a bougie badass. And she was out there killing it. We love Louis. It's, I mean, this woman, really, I'm Louis telling you. Louis was bougie before Gucci. And she went undefeated. It's just, it's an unbelievable season for her. Women's basketball for the first time ever. More ratings than men's basketball. See, the she, world, our girl should be paid more than we. She should be. She should be. And uh, Shaquille O'Neal, I heard him talking about it on on ESPN. He's like, nobody gives. This is what he said. Nobody gives a shit about men's basketball. The t- college. Mm-hmm. There are no memorable players. There's nothing happening that's exciting. Women's basketball is dominating. Is what he said. Oh, I like that. So I'm just saying. Speaking of female domination, did you see the Marco Robbie signed up? For a Monopoly movie. I did see that. I think that's kind of perfect for her. I did see that she was producing it. I don't know if she's going to be in it. I feel like she's the type that produces and stars. These days? Yeah. (laughs) Never mind. Who do you think she's going to play? I was going to say, these days she can play the Monopoly man. Because things are changing. She'll be Monopoly mama. Because there has been a couple of very famous things being made, and it was a either like a female-driven movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, a male-driven movie, and then they made it a female part. Uh, so it could she could be the Monopoly woman, or really Monopoly. The idea of Monopoly is very fascinating. Like really, Monopoly coming to life. Yeah, it was always a game that just kind of bored me because uh, it lasted so long. What was that game of you and Molly Moore? Shoots and ladders. Oh no That's no no! The- I'm a can- I'm a I'm a I'm a candy lantern. Candy yeah, Lantern. but shoots and ladders. That game is never ending. That one is never ending. I had no idea. The most basic, never ending game of all time. But amazing, so adrilly, adrilly lighting. Show adrilly lighting. What's what's the word we're looking for? Adrenal- Adren- adrenaline. Adrenaline. So adrenaline rushing. I don't know actually. Adrenalating. Remember at the <laughs> beginning when I said I was a fucking idiot. Adrenaline. End point. We are adrenaling. I'm adrenalation station. Oh wait, we gotta. We didn't. Uh, we gotta touch on the. Yeah. Um, what is it? Uh? The incredible solar eclipse that everyone was freaking oh, out about. The you know? solar eclipse, folks. It actually was so freaking cool. If people would come from I all over just to come so to Texas stupid. to see it. I was in Mexico. We did. Oh, did you not even get to see it at all? 
I got to go up. I looked at it when it was like, you know, maybe uh, a, like a third covered. Then Did I, you have the glasses on, I, I sure hope? Yes. And then I saw it a half cover. Then I saw it three quarters covered. And I'm like, this is this just kind of happening here. And do you- it comes from the man that wants to go to like the Grand Canyon and just look. That's always there. Yes. And you find that stuff beyond fascinating. This is a once in a lifetime. It's not. It happened 20 years ago. It's going to happen another no. 20 years. Oh, well, it's really cool. The hype. I'm, was it worth the hype? I, yes, let's just talk about because that. Because I a, went to a solar eclipse. 2017 party. was when it happened last no, time. No, that was that was not a full solar eclipse. From solar my, eclipse it was a total of the sol, sun. It, the last total solar eclipse before April eighth was 2017, and the next one will be in 20 years, in 2044. How old will I be in 20 years? 50. The hype four. to me made it sound like this. Is the first time this has happened in 300 years. <laughs> That's when you know we're all just desperate for something really cool. Was it not, though? It really It reminded me of Millennial. Do you remember Y2K? And everyone oh, thought yes. everything would stop. Do you want to know what I did in New York City? Tell me. I was a little shithead high schooler, I think. Was I? Yeah, maybe. I, I don't know. There. I was young in New York City when this was happening. And... Wait, not 2000. There was another one where it was like the Mayan calendar year. Everyone thought the, oh, yes, the so world was... All, mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. whatever year that was. Like, that was when the Mayan calendar ended. So everyone thought the world was going to end. And all over Times Square, people had signs. The world is ending. This is our last I moment. I think I was in New York with you then. I don't think so yet. Because if I was doing this when we met, this would have been weird. Um, the world's ending. Da, 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 da. So I would go to Times Square. I'd find these world ending protesters and I'd say, Hey, can I have all the money in your wallet right now? And they'd kind of look at me. I was like, we're not going to survive. You're saying it. I think we are. (laughs) I'd really need the money. (laughs) Please give me your money. Guess how many people actually gave me my money that were saying the world was going to end one, none. See people just love, let's see August. Oh wait, where was it? I'm like, come on. We knew each other. It was December 21st of 2012. We were engaged. <laughs> so. You were a cool kid. Hey, but that was really funny. I was like, what, 19, 20? Um, 21? 21. I was, I was 21. Yeah, I would have done that at 21. Shut, 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 but shut, But I'm shut. like, my point was, I was trying to prove what an idiot, you know, they were being and that they were full of shit because. People just want something to believe in. Yeah, and I thought it was like really clever. I was like, oh, this is great. They'll give me their money. Since they think they're not going to survive, and I think I will, and I'm going to be smart, and I'm going to... I'm going to be super smart. Yeah, no, they didn't. They, they, I wasn't buying it. So from then on, I was like, anyone protesting stuff in Times Square, I'm just, they don't actually believe it. Isn't it it weird the people, I think you're either a half glass full or a half glass empty. Any little thing, they're like, the world is ending. It's the apocalypse. Yeah, oh God. Some people just read one thing and they're like... The Wi-Fi's going down, the (laughs) this, the that. Wi-Fi's going down, we're out. you We're know. going. But it's the doomsdayers. Like it's That's you know. what it is, doomsdayers. Yeah. It's a thing. And we talked about this last podcast. Could you imagine living that way? And really in your mind, always having that panic. I think it's a form of OCD. Like a form Something. of non control. Something. Cause I really believe in people's hearts, they don't want to believe that. So it's something I think like mentally that is making them I I, I truly believe it's an O C D thing. And yes, you read different tabloids and you read see different media but it's like we hear stupid media all the time it's like you just if you let that really affect you and you think like what they're saying is actually gonna come true like you're right i think it's some sort of speaking of doomsday i don't know something doesn't click there but i think we're all gonna (laughs) be okay for a long time hand sanitizer Oh, don't tell me that's going to cause us something (laughs) recalls fda warns menthol exposure can cause blindness so hand sanitizer why am I laughing? <laughs> it's causing because blood. we all use it all day, every day. I never use okay, it. Okay, but we all did during COVID for sure. Mm, I did at the beginning. Well, everyone did. You thought you would have died, we thought. But isn't so of course now hand sight. So the doomsdayers now, now that I've read that, are truly losing their minds. The menthol in it. So what about menthol cigarettes? Okay, so what they mean is if you wipe it on your hands and then rub your eyes. Is that what you're saying? That I guess. Otherwise, how the heck it. would it even get to your eyes? That's actually very true. Okay. I mean, there are a million things that make could make you blind. You just don't do it. Yeah, that is true, actually. It's not going to make you blind from seeping through your no, fingers. No, but I, you're right. Just doing that and probably touching your eyes throughout the day. Because I touch my eyes all the time. If I don't have so mascara So I wonder on. if it's like a, like a slow progressional 
blindness. I didn't read that much into it. Or I just went into the doomsdayers just to have a happy doomsday today. Yeah, no, we love you, doomsdayers. We're just we don't want to hear about it. No, do keep you know, it yourself. Don't try to don't try to get us on. This is what they do. They they want you on the bandwagon. Mm-hmm. So they they say it to you. They vent it to you. They mm-hmm. put it out there, and they're waiting for bites. They want <laughs> bites like, back. Come on, baby. Please respond and please like what I'm saying and agree with me. Like, no, you sound bat shit crazy. I know. You I do. You do. And we're okay. It's always been okay. Well, and take me out then, too. I don't want to live. If, if it is doomsday, then all right, take me out. Let's just ride Let's like it's not happening until it does. Yeah. It's like that movie. What was the movie where they're all at the dinner table? I think we saw this in theaters. It was recent. A couple of years ago, they're all at the dinner table, and then they're just wiped out. They knew the world was ending. Like the oh, sun. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was that movie. Um, it was so weird. Either it got like unbelievable. Yes. Wasn't Adam Driver in it too? I don't remember. Um, but Or Brad Pitt. Somebody massive, massive. Yeah. It was on. And then it, it did. At the it end, they COVID, all They were all at the dinner table and they were just like, that's how I would want to go. And they knew it was happening, but mm-hmm. they just lived their life. You have to. Yeah. Yeah. What is the panic? Unless like zombies come and that kind of thing, that's a panic because you're not just wiped out quick. But I again, wiped we're out not quick. stressing about that actually happening. Mm-mm. If do you remember? I think there was an actual disease that kind of turned people into zombies. Oh yeah, that was a cool one. What was that? Was a that was? Crazy. I think it actually just happened. Like people were turning into <laughs> eating, <laughs> eating each other. <laughs> Real life. Oh shit! You got so, bit by the bug. No, it. No, people were actually eating themselves and eating real life zombies. PCP is what the disease is called. It's called PCP. Is that actually it? No, that's a drug that makes people eat themselves. <gasps> that's it. Yeah, that's bad stuff. You wonder what it is in your mind. Is it like your skin is hurting? You know what I realized, by the way, ADD moment. I say like a lot on this podcast, and I'm really working hard not to try to say like. Because you say it a lot in life. However, y- yeah, yeah. So I'm trying. I, I don't even re- like realize you say it. I must be just so used to it. I really didn't either until I started listening to myself every single time with the edit backs. And then I'm like, 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 totally, like, I didn't need to. That sounded like two weird leather chairs. Um, you know, last Friday we mentioned uh, Cole Briggs Plenty was missing. Mm-hmm. This Friday we could talk about he was found. Um, sad news is he was found passed away um, in his car. Uh, they have not released any statements as to how he died, but they have released the fact that there was no foul play. So They have released that? Yeah, there's no foul play. No murder, no, you know, uh, it, it, it's, who know, you know, it, I can't make an assumption, but um, yeah, he was found by himself in his car dead after, you know, the allegations. That just breaks my heart. And I know Mo said, please, everybody, stop reading into this. There's more to the story. Yeah. What breaks my heart is, I remember my parents always telling me this. Nothing, nothing is bad enough for you to end your life. And I think, especially with kids, and this whole cancellation, this thing of cancellation, we love, I mean, we all jump on the bandwagon to cancel somebody. And at the end of the day, that's a person. And it's, what do we want? Like, do we want them to kill themselves? What? Do, no, but as people, like when everybody jumps on this bandwagon to cancel some, what is the goal? Yes, for them to feel bad. Trust me. Just to, they fi- yeah, feel, just bad. to feel justice has been served. But to go in like that all the time, like where the entire world is against somebody, and yeah, it what, makes them what, feel that there's would, no other option. Even when they apologize, apology is not good enough. The apology wasn't sincere enough. Apologies was too long. Da, 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 da. Yeah. It's like, do you want them to end it? I, that's what I don't understand. Some, what is the point? You know, I. Wow, I, justice is like, can, do you sleep better? No. I, I, that's uh, the part of the whole cancellation culture. You can have opinions. I feel like we need a new twist. When somebody does something wrong, let's try the idea of reteaching and and if that person is just a shit good riddance like let them be a shit cuz they're not going to change but to like destroy people to like even how much press but was but this wasn't even that like it i but it was a lot of press on him 
if he isn't a person in the spotlight, it's that's a lot. A lot about news outlets. All of a sudden, he had gone missing. All of a sudden, page six had said the allegations. It just has to be a lot for somebody. Oh, I am not disagreeing at all. I mean, if you are in the limelight, if you are an actor, if you're an entertainer, if you're in front of the camera, if you are a public figure, that's just what comes with it. The good is exposed, the bad is exposed, and everything in between. You don't sign up for that when you do mm -hmm. this profession, but you do at the, indirectly because we're making ourselves so public with the work that we do that everyone feels they can have and share an opinion on it. It's just a lot. I remember it's Claudia. Tough. It's tough. We spoke to Claudia and for her, her and Jackie we, we've, had a, we've a, gone a through cancellation. It. And it was just really cool to watch her. She's such a strong human being. Have you never respected somebody more? Like, did you realize, I remember Eric just being, I texted Claudia being like, Eric is so, and what is the word? Just inspired. Oh, yeah, she just blew, she blows me away. Is an amazing human. I, I think anybody who's ahead of their times and creates something is just. But to do that, be canceled, then learn and to come back. Yeah, it's amazing. When everybody is on your fanny, but she rallied with her best friends, her sisters, her amazing husband, her family. And to come back even stronger and to have learned. I mean, Stassi Schroeder did the same thing. I just, there's something about that that is so inspiring to me. I agree. I agree. You Because I don't think I have, have that in me. I wish, I, I'm learning to be, but like I said earlier, if I hurt somebody or so, like I, it destroys me. Yeah. Well, sometimes I just need to be like, come on and brush your shoulder. What was that song? Brush your that, shoulder. That was, yeah, yeah, exactly. That was one of the things that, that, you know, Dan Schneider did is he tackled it head on. He, I still need to watch, but. The, the, the day it aired, the yeah. day after it aired, he said, I want to sit down, interview me and ask me everything. I feel like we need to watch the episode that came out April 7th. The newest. Nobody's talking about it, which is actually kind of weird. Nobody is talking about it. Did it not it? come out? I don't know. Because it not. is super weird that nobody is talking about it. I think a it. lot of things kind of got overshadowed by the eclipse in a weird way. Like Even it, our episode with Jefferson, everyone go listen. It is the, one of the funniest, sweetest episodes ever. But everybody was, including myself. Was watching the eclipse. Was watching the eclipse. So it's like, what, what are you, you going to do? That whole day was dedicated to the eclipse. I think the week was. I mean, it, it was really like was. the hype and now like. But it was so eerie. I was at my girlfriend, Becca, had eclipse birthday. And all of a sudden the world just got still and dark. It was so weird. See, it didn't hit like that in Mexico okay, City. Okay, I mean, it was pitch black, Eric. It was so See, we didn't weird. get it And like the that. birds right before it were going, because I guess the birds were, so it was. Maybe that's why the hype didn't live up for me, because I saw the. the, the yes, you weren't in the line. Like, no, there was a big line. But I saw the sun getting covered, mm. and I was like, okay, it's getting covered. Eric, Qu it was so eerie. See, we didn't get blackout. We got blackout, which was That's super, cool. super cool. And it was, so if you live in Texas, you know, right before a tornado hits, it gets super still. And it's like the winds, I mean, everything is so still. That's what happened. The birds had flown off before and it was just, black. I mean, it was, the street lights came. I mean, it was so wild. That's it was awesome. super, super cool. That's so cool. That's and then so it was cool. just done. And it was like, we all went about we were, our day. We were literally filming uh, this crazy shootout scene. And I kept like bam, trying, bam, to, bam, bam, trying bam. to look because they would they pull out the glass from the film cameras and you mm. could look through it through that because you're supposed to be able to film the sun with those cameras. So we were using the filter on oh, the camera. Wait, that's actually really cool. Which was cool. And then we broke for lunch. And then it was like, all right, there's like three minutes left. So I was like, well, we're all having lunch. I figured I'll know when it's time to look up when everything gets dark. And it never did. What a freaking bummer. Bummer. Gosh, solar clips, you're just such a mess. Are you watching Vanderpump Rules? Yeah. Yeah, it's my favorite show. Yeah, I've I've always loved Vanderpump. No. Well, not well, Ariana Maddox, you've heard about all of that. I no, finally she's feel in like Chica she's in Chicago on Broadway. I do yeah, know. Yeah, and doing unbelievable. But she's kind of been a monster this whole season. 
And this past episode, I finally saw her human eyes. She has a scene with Sheena and Lala, and she's crying about what the house means to her, and it was her dream house. And it was like, finally, that's what, because Katie Maloney's finally like, Katie Maloney baloney was finally happy that somebody was miserable like her. Like, what do they always say? Misery. Loves company. Loves company. Yep. And it was like, finally, somebody's miserable with me. So the two of them are these like walking, miserable humans together. And finally, this past episode, I was like, oh, that, there's her heart. But do you know if Brittany Cartwright and Jax are separated? No, I didn't, but. After 10, no surprise. Yeah, I'm not really surprised. But I kind of thought she would always stick it out because she sticked with him. And she, I thought he would always cheat and stuff. And she'd kind of be like, whatever. They never had kids? Yeah, they have a son. Oh, they do. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I know, which makes it even worse. It breaks your heart. Let's see here. No, we're good. Um, Should we call it a day? Yeah, what's your glamour and what's your grit? Oh, my grit is that I had a little too much to drink last night. So much so, she had an IV delivered to the house today. Um, And my glamour is being too, is being too, was being able to be a tiny, tiny part of raising money for the mobile health units. That was the greatest, one of the greatest glamours of my life. Well, you, you were the chair. You, you, you created know, this whole thing, didn't you? Te- yes, but the team there is amazing. I was talking to my mom about this because being the chair and a lot of time being MCs and when people talk about it, they'll be talking about a lot of what I did and behind, there's so many people that are behind the scene that deserves it so much more than me. It's like in a movie. But it you, took, it, the amount of work I saw you put into this over the last year is yeah. unfathomable. I mean, you guys would have, I mean, it was a lot. Yes. And it went off without a hitch. You raised an exorbitant amount of money for an incredible cause. I'm proud of you. The Thank city you. of Fort Worth is proud of you. Thank you. So many uh, people struggling with cancer are getting the help that they deserve and need because of you. So pat yourself on the back, please. Thank you. And uh, you were a big part of of the whole thing. So that is an amazing glamour. Um, did you just say your grit? Yeah, my how I'm feeling today. Ah, okay. How you're feeling today is yeah, gritty. I remember, I had a little too much to drink. Oh, right, 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 right. <laughs> okay, I was just so blown away by the fact that you didn't give yourself more credit there. Um, glamour, being back home. Been away Ugh, and just home. getting into bed last night. I didn't get home till like 1045, but getting into that bed and giving Molly Morgan a kiss on the forehead and her popping her eyes open and saying, Daddy, you're here, and wrapping her arms around me was like the gr- every time. It is the greatest moment of my entire life, every single time. Which is so weird because Mick, shockingly, was the one who missed you. The and most. he woke up this morning saying, Leave. <laughs> He was so mad at me for no reason. It's like, Mickey, I love you. He's like, meow. And I was like, what do you want me to do? Go back on the airplane? He's like, yes. <laughs> it's like, I missed you too. Thank you. Come here, Molly Morgan. Make me feel better. Uh, but that's just how it goes. That's and then man. And then he had a moment, and then he loved me. He was my best friend. Oh, uh, Mickey boy. Uh, What's your grit? I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't like have, uh, I don't think I've got the grit right now. Oh, I- Good. Look at us, content and non-gritment. You know, we really are doing doing fine this Friday. I know. Well, Friday. guys, we got a really, really exciting guest coming up on Monday, so stay tuned. It's going to be a lot of fun. Mm. And uh, thanks for joining us today. And I was going to try to tie it in with something clever from uh, what what we said earlier, but I it just I had it in there and it just escaped me. But thanks, guys. Love Adios. you. We'll see you later. <laughs> Glamour. Grit.